today we are going to be talking about the color node in mash and what are your uses and how we can use the color node to create different type of motion graphics in mash so let's quickly get into it now i'm going to start off with a simple primitive let's take a cube maybe and i'm going to quickly go to the mash menu and click on mash so we have this distribution node uh, by default and i'm going to just change this to grid you can keep it to whatever you want and let's make this uh, but let's keep it to three something like this i'm going to turn off the grid just so we can see a little better uh and uh, i'm just gonna quickly change the color of this a bit darker all right so we have something like this let's say you have a lot of uh different capsules or something you're creating some kind of scene you have a lot of instances and uh, you want to shade them differently all right and if i just uh, show you the ipr right now you would notice that we have a single color something that looks like this and uh, if i apply stand surface it's going to apply again a singular color so that's why uh, mash color was introduced to give a random color to each and every object so what i'm going to do is quickly go back to mash you can click on your mash again and in the mash i'm going to click on color and add color node so you'll notice that instantly everything turns white because the color has been set to white uh, now there are a couple of ways that you can randomize your colorization the first thing is you'll notice that we have random hue, saturation and value which means we have color, the amount of richness and how uh, light or dark it's going to be. So you can just turn this up all right, and you'll notice that we have something that looks like this. So again if you want uh, something like if you are uh, really into pastel colors or flat colors you can keep the saturation to very minimal and also you can do the same with value randomness to keep it somewhere around 0.2 and you can also play around with random hues. Let's see if you don't like the color, if you um, like the color palettes that you have on the screen, but you don't like the way that they are organized, what you can do is you can simply change the seeds value to change how they behave. And then you'll have something that looks like this. Right, so you, uh, you can always go back and change anything. Now, let's say if you are creating something like a single color oriented theme, you want a single color family or let's say you're creating a autumn theme you have autumn uh, tree and a lot of trees are falling and you want that autumn look what you can do is you can also play around with the single color let's say if i give a color something that looks like new year red and what i'm going to do is uh, so we have this primary color set to red i'm going to reduce the random hue, and now you'll notice that we have colors similar to that family only so you can play around with this only so you have options to uh, add how much hue you want in that, how much saturation you want in that. And similarly, if you want to add more value into it. And again, you can change the seed. So you can have one oriented theme as well. And uh, the other thing that uh, you have to understand while playing with color node is that this is not renderable directly with Arnold. So if I just show you the IPR, You'll notice that Arnold IPS still renders it as a gray scale. So we have to fix this. We have to find a way to transport this directly into our stand surface. So what we are going to do is basically click on this and let's apply our new material. Assign new material, go to shader and stand surface. So what stand surface does is basically add our color. We can always go here, add textures and our nodes and so on. So we are going to make a single attachment. We want to transport this color information into a stand surface. So I'm going to open up my hypershade and let's right click graph network. And in here, I'm going to search for something called as user and uh, you'll find user data color. Click on this and uh, you'll notice that we have a uh, option to add our attribute and then we have the default value. I'm going to attach this to the base color, right? We get flat black color. And in this attribute, what we are going to do is type in color and capital S set. All right. So this is what we are going to type. And why are we typing this particular name? Well, if you go back to your mash, you notice that the color set name has been set to color set by default. So we are using this attribute name to transport this information into our stand surface. Now, if I go back again, let's take another light again and IPR, you'll notice that still nothing has changed. We still have that same black color. So what is uh, something that we are missing out? Well, what we have to do is the last thing is you click on your repro mesh shape. All right. Go back to your Arnold. Right. And if you scroll down, you'll have something called as export vertex colors. Click on this. 
all right and now if you go back to your ipr you'll notice that you have the access to your colors now what i'm going to do is go back to my stand surface click on your object right click material attribute and in here i'm going to open this up and uh, you'll notice that we have set our color node i'm going to click on my mesh and again if i just change this it is completely connected now i can play around uh, with whatever value i want and just have nice color information now the one thing that you can really use this information is if you are creating something like maybe a lot of glasses what you can do is just plug the same information into your transmission channel of your stand surface if i go back to your material attribute so you can instead of plug it into your base color you can plug it into a transmission let's say if you're creating something like a gummy bear lots of gummy bear and so on so what you can do is instead of uh, having the base color i'm going to plug this transmission color close this up and what i'm going to do is let's right click material attribute uh, we don't need the base color anymore and in the transmission i'm going to turn this on and let's see and now you have a lot of glass object all right there you go so this is a really nice way of creating random glass color if you're playing with a lot of glasses and everything now let's quickly use this information to create some kind of scene all right so what i'm going to do is let's uh, maybe take a simple cube i'm going to just uh, change this a bit and we'll create some kind of lego or something like that and we'll see how we can use this information and uh, i'm going to just increase this to maybe like 40 bring this up all right let's keep it here somewhere all right and uh, i'm gonna control d this and shift d that right, looks good let's keep it here select everything shift right click combine you can also go to mesh combine all right i'm gonna delete the history and freeze transform and we can also name this as lego all right uh, so it's uh, ready to um, mash so i'm gonna click on mash and we have our distribute let's uh, go to our distribute and i'm gonna just click on grid i'm gonna increase the numbers let's um, have this all right now i know we have not uh, actually learned a lot of other nodes but i'm just gonna use a new node for the experimental just to showcase this we are going to be covering the random node but this is just to show you what uh, you can do with this kind of scene and uh, let me just transform this all right so i'm just uh, using this random node uh, just to give you an understanding how you can create an abstract art using this uh, it doesn't have to be random node you can use it whatever you want in a couple of days we'll see what you can do with a random node anyways uh, going back to mash let's add a color node all right and uh, again if you like you can keep any color you want all right and again let's right click assign new material shader stand surface let's call the stand surface our lego and in the color again i'm going to choose my user data color and in the attribute i'm going to type in color capital s and set there you go again one more thing has left which is uh, export our vertices color so again remember to go to your repro mesh shape Arnold and export a vertex color sometimes for some people it still might not work uh, the reason probably will be you have to check whether you have turned it on with your repro as well if you scroll down in the output attribute make sure you have color per vertex turned on uh, make sure this is checked on otherwise it will not work anyways so let's go on and i'm going to stop this and there you go so we have a very nice looking lego scene right and i can go back to my mash and again i can play around with different colors if i don't like there you go so this is a very nice fun way to shade uh, a lot of instances a lot of different objects all at once with a single node so this is a very useful node to play around with yeah you can create a gummy bear and uh, use the color node to basically shade them to look a bit uh, jelly like use transmission value uh, in your stand surface and again plug the same information in your transmission to create that uh, jelly look uh, all right so that's it uh, it was a really fun node and very useful node 
and have fun play around with it if you come up with something interesting share with me and that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video